Hello everyone, so this is Shruti Oja and in this video we are going to talk about general physiology quick revision. So this will be a like summarizing video for general physiology because this is a kind of less important topic. Uh, I will make it in two parts uh, which will first will cover the basic uh, concepts, the feedback mechanisms and everything and second will uh, cover up the like the cell uh, physiology part basically uh, mainly. So first of all, what is homeostasis? This is a very important short or we can say sub question. They can uh, put homeostasis along with um, the regulatory feedback mechanism uh, cycles, right? Um, in question, right? In exam. So homeostasis, all our body parameters have to maintain a near constant normal, near normal levels, right? So this constancy is called homeostasis. And uh, we can also explain it with the concept of milieu interior. Okay. So it is given in some of the standard books. Uh, you can refer uh, to them also for details. But this much is uh, like nearly enough for it. So control systems. Control systems can come as a long question. And you need to write the three. Sometimes we forget about the third. That is the feed forward. So negative, positive and feed forward control system. In negative, uh, we are having uh, the like the baroreceptor reflex. For example, if I um, if a action is there and if there is increase in some hormone level, that increase in hormone level, that resultant uh, things will eventually inhibit that further increase. So it is negative. So inhibition is there. But if that increase in hormone level will further increase it, then we say it is positive, right? Next is like uh, negative feedback. We are having the baroreceptor reflex. If there is increased BP, um, then we will have um, reflex like something lower in BP, right? By our physiological mechanisms. So uh, endocrine hormone regulation, we are having these are some of the at, like extra information. If you write, you have an edge on because like dexamethasone on suppression test DST is done in Parma, right? In second year. But if you write here only, then it will be more presentable and more good looking answer. So Cushing syndrome, cortisol inhibits the ACTH. Okay. Uh, thyroid hormone inhibits the TSH from anterior pituitary, right? So next is positive feedback. In positive feedback, once started, it enhances or amplifies the effect of its own. So it is a vicious cycle. So example, the classic example is hemorrhagic shock. So the mount, I have drawn these arrows. That means you need to write it in flowchart. And this is the way how we convert a paragraph into a flowchart. Many times it is a very common question by uh, like students that how do we convert a paragraph into a flowchart? So this is the way, right? So the amount of blood in the body is decreased to such a low level that enough blood is not available for the heart to pump effectively. So that results in weakening of the heart leading to then further diminished pumping. So that decreases the coronary blood flow and that causes more weakening of the heart. So the cycle repeats itself and you can say it is a vicious cycle of positive feedback. Next, more examples. This is the most common example which everyone tells, right? But you need to tell something extra. So this is also a common example that LH uh, surge, right? comes under a positive feedback is LH surge and the hormone responsible for that LH surge is estrogen. This you will study in endocrine physiology as well and it is a very important explain why question in that chapter. So next uh, example is like the calcium released by the sargoplasmic reticulum and um, the uptake as well from the circa. Sarka, I hope you have studied in NMP, Nerve Muscle Physiology. So, next is uh, parturition. It produces and reflects. If you write this word, it will obviously enhance your answer quality. So, plasma oxytocin level rise and cause further uterine contractions. Next is action potential. Action potential is like Hodgkin cycle. So, these words which I have highlighted in red are very important to write. Bec see if you don't write it is not so that you will fail but if you write this is the point where you can enhance your answer because the concept the cycles flowcharts are 
everywhere same but these things can obviously help you gain more marks now blood coagulation coagulation cascade and it's the like amplification of the subsequent uh, steps okay so this is a mnemonic this is a common mnemonic in fact and i hope it can help you so next is feed forward so there is a control system in a body which uh, requires no stimulus basically there is apprehension and it anticipates he like i can know what will happen in the future so that i can take uh, accordingly uh, the steps beforehand so like uh, cephalic phase of gastric secretion if you have done git in physiology then uh, you know when we think uh, of the food we have salivation and in gastric acid secretion also even only when we think about food so and uh, like uh, tachypnea when we think of uh, exercise so these are some examples and um, shivering is also like an anticipation of the, like cold temperature then we will have shivering so this part is not for like first year in some colleges it may be asked but yes you can learn the formula at least so gain like our body tries to compensate any change from uh, which is deviating from the homeostasis and the constant level so there is a correction and there is an error remaining after the correction so this error is not the total error which was before the correction it is after the correction so what is the gain here like in if you read this that a person is doing treadmill but the pre blood pressure rises to 180 on stopping exercise his systolic bp falls to 150 now what is the gain of this control system correction is 180 say 150 then it is 30 mg is the correction and the normal should be 120 systolic right so the error remaining is again 30 so gain is 30 upon 30 1 so this is a small numerical it can come in ospi or as a very very short question or as a sub question infinite feedback gain principle so when is infinity as an answer when the denominator is zero right so where error is zero and which part of the body shows it it can be a important viva question it is shown by kidneys in bp regulation blood pressure regulation so next we come on to body fluids so in body fluids you need just need to know about these three things and nothing else no darrow yenet diagram and everything that those all things are for neat pg and all not now because in our college uh, personally um, they, it is not asked um, in the prof exams so total body water 60% of the body weight okay then intracellular fluid and the extracellular intracellular is 2/3 of total body weight and in extracellular is 1/3 okay so just think that our body is kind of a like we can say solid right what it is just a slang um, layman language okay it is solid so cells are there and uh, more it is more fluid or more solid just think about it like i am having something like structure right so cells are there so water will be inside the cell or outside are the cells floating more or uh, the water is inside the cell more we can think about that so this way we can understand intracellular fluid is more that is 2/3 and extracellular is less that is 1/3 and this is 40% and this is 20% of the body weight now interstitial fluid and plasma again interstitial fluid we are having between the uh, we can say cells again the cell side is dominating here that is 3/4 of the ex extracellular fluid and plasma is only 1/4 we think we have so much blood and everything but it is lying at the lowest uh, classification so major cation is sodium we all know and um, the major cation um, in inside the cell is potassium okay and major anion outside is chloride and inside is phosphate okay so we can also learn by the mnemonic that is sodium chloride is outside the salt is outside and potassium phosphate is inside next uh, to learn the levels if it is required you can learn this um, diagram which will help you to do so right so next we move on to uh, the membrane transport 
in brain tran transport uh, basically we classify on the basis of energy first so if energy needed then active not needed then passive so in active transport what we are having the primary the vesicular and secondary active so in active transport the primary basic we have the sodium potassium atps we all know right so this is sodium potassium atps and this is uh, basically for the sodium and this is for the potassium and um, you can see the alpha subunit and beta so the, it is the potassium binding site it is outside because potassium is um, more outside more inside and sodium is more outside but this is active transport we need energy for it and we are doing it against the gradient so something will be opposite right that is why we need some force and resistance um, to overcome so and this is the potassium binding site and sodium and three sodium will go outside and uh, two potassium will come inside and this is the open which will um, like bind to this site and restrict its uh, function we can say so other example are hydrogen potassium calcium and hydrogen atp is this next is uh, we can say it is a heterodimer because both subunits are not same they are different one more fact that thyroid hormones and aldosterone and insulin this increase the action of sodium potassium uh, pump so we can also relate these things later on to hypokalemia hyperkalemia and these things right next is the coupling ratio you can write it as a point the it is electrogenic pump and we can write the two subunits are there and which subunits does what and beta subunit is a glycoprotein and it has three extracellular glycosylation sites if you draw this diagram it is more than enough okay if you don't have time then regulation i have already written thyroid hormones aldosterone insulin and dopamine and these are the things open digoxin inhibits the pump okay so to enhance the myocardial contractility next is secondary active now the main channel these channels are not using atp but the sodium potassium atp is is uh, like using the atp okay but to function for the function of these we need that sodium potassium atp is so it is secondary active not directly not primary it is secondary active so these are the examples which you can learn um there are plenty examples and uh, and i have added something extra about like sglt and uh, these sodium iodide transporter which is in thyroid gland and um, nkcc which is in kidney so ncc which is also in kidney a sodium phosphate co transporter calcium sodium calcium exchanger chloride bicarbonate exchanger i hope you know it is in rbc yes so this is something about clinical and not related to this chapter but i have added it in the pdf you can refer to it on your own or later when you will cover some syllabus so now passive um in passive we are having the diffusion and the osmosis diffusion is simple and facilitated simple is without carrier and facilitated is with carrier okay so example you know diffusion of respiratory gases and here we are having the aquaporins glucose transporters right now in diffusion we are having the fick's law fick's law is rate of diffusion is a uh, c um if the thickness is more it will be fast or slow from physics and chemistry we can remember this at least so this is the basic formula which you need to understand in fick's law now in facilitated it is dependent on carrier protein so it will saturate after some time that is why the graph is like this and this is an important graph it is given guyton and all uh, you can uh, refer to it as well and simple diffusion is not dependent on any carrier so it will continue independently um okay it is straight line so glut transporters see um it is not exactly asked here but it is given in the first chapter so you can refer to it afterwards when you will complete your syllabus when you will understand from git and all those chapters you will understand what are the glute transporters where are they and like in endocrine git you will learn about it later and in renal as well so next is these aquaporins the same story goes here you can do it afterwards but i have added in these notes so that uh, you can refer it in one go when you are revising afterwards so 
नेक्स्ट इज नॉन आयनिक डिफ्यूजन इट इज़ नॉट इम्पॉर्टेंट बट लाइक सम वीक एसिड एंड बीस आर क्वाइट सॉल्यूबल इन द सेल मेम्ब्रेन सो इन अनडेसोसिएटेड फॉर्म सो वे दे कैन नॉट द क्रॉस द मेम्ब्रेन इन चार्ज और वी वी नो दैट इट इज इट इज फॉस्फोलिपिड राइट मेम्ब्रेन सेल मेम्ब्रेन सो इफ इट इज चार्ज इट कान इट कैन नॉट क्रॉस बट इट इज नॉट चार्ज एंड इज नॉन पोलर इट कैन क्रॉस विद द हेल्प ऑफ डिफ्यूजन ओनली बट the process by which ammonia is secreted into the urine and then changes to um, we can say the ion ammonium ion then we can say it is example of non ionic diffusion ammonia is like excreted and then it is converting to right so it is not diffusing in this form rather it is being diffuse um, ex- uh, um, crossing the membrane in this form right this you will learn better when you will uh, study the renal physiology but yes to include i have um, put it here next osmosis like diffusion of water from the area of its high concentration that is low solute con- content to area of low concentration the main point is you can write it in brackets because some people understand it the opposite way osmolarity osmolarity uh, it is per liter and osmolality it is the per kilogram okay 1 l is 1 liter okay per liter 1 liter 1 l and 2 ls we can say um, it is per kilo okay simply 1 liter you can say osmolarity and 2 l it is not 1 liter so it would be kg <laughs> just a vague tip and trick so a smaller gap it is not for prof uh, prof exams but uh, yes you can again uh, refer to it it is the difference between the measured serum osmolality and calculated serum osmolality which is called the smaller gap so solutions uh, we can refer to it when we are having the isotonic hypotonic and uh, hypertonic solutions and how it is calculated that osm- osmotic pressure it is van't hoff equation that is pi is equal to nrt by v this is all uh, like very easy an extra point which i would like to tell you is the anion gap i would uh, request you to study it from biochemistry if it is asked in physio it will help you as well so this this taro yani diagram we don't need it for uh, the prof exam and uh, at last i would like to include this vesicular transport as well so vesicular transport exocytosis or and endocytosis exo means out endo means it is um, coming in so phagocytosis receptor mediated or pinocytosis that is cell drinking so exocytosis it is the snare proteins we can see this like this is a cell okay and this is the membrane and this is syntaxin and this is a vesicle and when these uh, proteins will couple will when these proteins will bind to each other it will help in exocytosis and uh, next is mode of vesicle release it is non constitutive like um, we can say constitutive is regular regular means like uh, it is happening all the time so it is constitutive pathway like we don't need any prompt uh, like uh, some signal or anything which will um, tell it to go outside but non constitutive is uh, like we need some stimulus or some extra pathway so that it can initiate the process next is um like clostridium botulinum and these things you can add um in a neuromuscular junction not needed here uh, specifically and uh, clostridium tetani and all these are i have just mentioned so receptor mediated endocytosis um this you will learn in biochem as well if you have learned the lipid um metabolism and all uh, you will learn that clathrin coated pits are there so this is the structure of the clathrin um it is extra not needed so which this process which transports substances from outside to inside of the cell uses the protein uh, we can say clathrin so clathrin molecules have the shape of triskelions with three legs radiating from the central limb so this central limb three legs okay so this was like a summary of general physiology uh, part 1 and in next video i will talk about the part 2 that is about the cell physiology uh, specifically and if you like this video if you like the summary then do uh, like it uh, subscribe the channel and share it with your friends because sharing is caring